Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and it's time for another running shoe, yay or nay. There is a revisited running shoe in today's yay or nay. Don't think I'm repeating it, I'm purely putting it back in because it's finally been released. I feel it's relevant and appropriate in terms of the moment to include it again. So first shoe today is from the Atreyu Running Company. I haven't tried out their first shoe. I'm quite keen though to do that at some point. I know they've fulfilled all of their initial rollouts of those first shoes. So I'm very keen to try and get my hands on this new model that they're gonna release in early 2021. Hopefully 2021 will be a much better year than 2020. So it looks like they're gonna release their first carbon plate running shoe. They're clearly going after the Vaporfly next percent in terms of that lowest weight crown. The specs I saw quoted about 177 grams for a US size nine, which is right down there on the weight. Well, I say down there, it's up there, good. You know what I mean? That's certainly crazy light over some of the models I've tried out recently. I don't know what it is in terms of size scale between this and that new Atreyu shoe, but this carbon plate equipped running shoe will be called the Artist. I just really like the name. I think that's really cool. Perhaps it could come with a whole palette of different paints that you could color the shoe and maybe put your own designs on there. I can sense a video coming on about that. As I say, Atreyu are a brand I'm really keen to try out. And you know I love a nice cushioned Pebax midsole underfoot. And it looks like a nice simple upper as well. They don't sort of mess around too much. Just simple stuff that works. A bit like a Bigsby on an electric guitar. It's just a simple design, but it works. One thing I'm really encouraged to see from that company is the fact that they send out samples of shoes, but then they change the designs based on feedback they've received from runners. I think with the previous shoe that they released, runners felt it was perhaps a little too firm, so they added a slightly thicker insole. There's a similar profile here, certainly to that original shoe they released. And this one certainly seems more like a finalized prototype. At a potential price of $100, I think that could be an incredible shoe. Maybe it could even match my treasured Reebok Run Fast 2. That one's still king of the Pebax based midsole value shoes. Something like that. So the Atreyu Artist, even though it's still a prototype, is certainly a yay from me. Going from cushioned to even more cushioned now the Hoka One One Bondi 7. Now this was a shoe I was keen to try out, but after my efforts recently in the Clifton 7, I just don't think I need all of that midsole. Even the Clifton 7 for me just seems like absolute overkill right now. That massive EVA on the bottom there, it's just not really doing me any favors. It's okay as a daily shoe, but there's loads of other shoes that do the job. So this one looks like an even higher stacked version of the Clifton 7. Hoka quote a 303 gram weight for that US size 9, which is, it's gonna be a heavy shoe in my size. I better get bodybuilding, ready to pick up the box from the doorstep. It's heartening though to see that Hoka offer a wide and extra wide fitting now on most of their shoes. Certainly the heel collar's got a slightly different design with a piece of memory foam to further wrap the Achilles and pad the ankle. A little bit like swaddling a baby, I guess. Except your Achilles doesn't wake up and ask for food every four hours. There seems to be a more patterned outsole rubber here on the bottom of the Bondi 7, perhaps to further improve the grip. For me though, 130 pounds, it's quite a lot of cash for a lot of cushion that I just don't think I need. With my current training, most of the lower stack shoes are really meeting the requirements that I have, even over the longer runs, really. Did a 15 mile run in the Adi Zero Pro, and no problems there. So for me, it's a nay on the Hoka Oni Oni Bondi 7, but I can see it working for lots of other runners. If you're a more heavily built runner who's searching for that maximum cushion for those long runs, this could be right up your street. For the longer, slower mileage sessions, I think the Bondi 7 could do a really good job for many runners. The Nike Hyperfly is next. So photos seen here are from Protos of the Grams Instagram page, just so you're aware. This famed, very difficult to spot shoe has only cropped up a few times on the internet. I think this one's cropped up again and interest is peaking again as the Tempo Next Percent came out and it didn't fit the bill for everyone. 
So looking at the shoe, it's actually got a similar tongue to the next percent with a slightly lower stack Zoom X midsole. Actually, it really does remind me in the midsole of the Pegasus Turbo. Very similar setup, certainly in the heel there with the angle of the protrusion. On the outsole, there looks like a lot more surface area though. It doesn't look quite as narrow in the arch. I think the outsole certainly got a little bit more in common with the next percent or the Alpha Fly than the Pegasus Turbo previous iterations. You've got that big, rugged, ridged rubber section. Then the ridges continue through to the back heel area. I'm spotting lace loops rather than eyelets. Either side of the tongue. I mean, details are few and far between right now about this shoe. It does seem like it's geared up to be a shoe to use between 5K and a half marathon with that slightly lower stack. I think that could appeal to a lot of people though. I think this one's got all the ingredients to be a real winner. So it's a yay for me for the Hyperfly from Nike. We're slowly closing in on the final releases from different manufacturers with those carbon plates. The shoe war perhaps is almost over, or has it just begun? The Adizero Adios Pro from Adidas finally released to the public earlier this week. Those German shoe masters though do need to improve their website as I had quite an unsuccessful time trying to get a hold of the Adizero Adios Pro on release. It's all right now, I think I've, I think I've got over it now. Maybe. I've been a big fan of the Adi Zero Pro upper. That cellar mesh, the fit, everything. It's just a sublime upper to me. One of the best. A wonderful fit for my feet. And a responsive, but forgiving, boost and light strike midsole cake. So when I found out that the upper was very close to the Adi Zero Pro on the Adi Zero Adios Pro, I was all in on this release. If only I'd managed to get a pair. I'm sure I'll get a chance to get a pair in the future though. Cellar mesh is the real deal, guys and girls. And those of you who haven't tried it yet, I do urge you to do so. Even if you don't like celery, I think that you're gonna like it. It's nowhere near as crunchy as celery. A little bit of hummus, that'd be quite nice now. I'm hungry again. A man can only eat so many ginger nut biscuits. Carbon infused rods aside, I'm very excited to see Adidas still going their own way with their running shoes. I mean, there's some nods to current trends with this shoe, but still a traditional vibe with those winning lasts that they keep on using. And a more reasonable price as well. 169 Earth credits isn't too bad. It's not too wallet punishing. It's a firm yay for me for the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro. Yes, I managed to say it without messing up. That's all the running shoes for today. Let me know if you're gonna gamble or stick on any of these. Certainly the Adi Zero, Adios Pros, looking good. Hyperfly, that could be an exceptional shoe. The Bondi 7, I just don't need all that cushion. And the Atreyu, the artist. Oh yeah. Musical interlude time. I don't know whether it's the return of the warm and sunny weather here in the UK, but something made me dig back out Kurt Vile and Courtney Barnett's superb album from 2017. A lot of sea lice. Over Everything and Continental Breakfast are my two favourites on this one. But every track's good in its own right. And there's quite a lot of different types of songs on here. At times the album sounds like it's teetering on the edge of falling to bits, which I kind of like. Only nine tracks here, but all nine tracks are worthy of inclusion on the album. Kurt Vile and Courtney Barnett's voices just work so well together. And also, their guitar playing just sits really well, backed by some really smooth and natural sounding drums and bass. This one's a winner. Do go and check it out. Kurt Vile and Courtney Barnett, a lot of sea lice. That's just about all for me for today, guys. Thanks for watching through to the very end of the video. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. It also helps the channel out a huge amount if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.